get you to come up and take these needs before the Lord. Nice, cool morning. Everything is lovely. <laughs> the Lord is good. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege of coming together once again. Lord, lifting our voices in praise and worship and thanksgiving unto thee and to fellowship with each other, O Lord. The unity of the Spirit, O Lord, is so precious among those that believe and trust in thee. We thank you for this day, O Lord. Thank you that we're able to be here this morning. We just ask, O God, that you would anoint each and everything that's said and done today. May your anointing be heavy upon us, O God, that we might receive by revelation those things that are coming forth. And Father, we pray for those, many that stand in need this morning, many, O Lord, that have been mentioned and others that have not. But Father, you know each and every one. We're fully persuaded that you love and take care of your own. And Father, we recognize that you allow things to come upon us for a purpose. And help us, O oh God, with love and thanksgiving for your grace and mercy to approach each and every day and each and everything that comes upon us, knowing that all things work together for good to those that love God. That's because we're the called according to his purpose. And it's because he gives us a chance to overcome, saints. And then, dear Father, as we come to you this morning, we know that there's many things upon our hearts, many things that we can mention. But we want to commit ourselves to you, O Lord, and be led absolutely by you in all that's said and done. Grant, O God, that the ministry might be anointed for this hour of time and that they might have the freedom of speech, Lord, and all things pertaining to godliness. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You know, if it's all right, I'd like to try to sing that little... I'm redeemed this morning. Because we are redeemed, life is good. I'm redeemed by love divine. Oh, glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Oh, I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Oh, I'm redeemed by love divine. Oh, glory, glory, Christ is mine. Peace, peace, wonder. 
coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, and fathom love, billows of love.
want you to win inside. Oh, we're following Jesus. Have you got your banner held high? Oh, this is God's mighty arm. Oh, we will be denied. Oh, they'll come on over. On the winning side. Oh, now come on over to the winning side. Oh, we're following Jesus. We've got a better held high. Oh, it's God's mighty army. Oh, when we won't be denied. Oh, come on over to the winning side. Amen. We are on the winning side. Amen. And, and we need to have our banner held high. And we need to praise the Lord and glorify Him. All right, you may be seated if you can. It's good to have Sister Angie Polston here today. I know that she's had to miss a lot for sickness and different circumstances. So since you're here, we're going to ask you to come up and your Sister Tammy to come up and sing for us. Sister Tina after. I want to thank everybody for praying for me. I can feel the the prayers, I've felt the strength that I've not felt for a long time. And I'm just thankful that I got to be here today. I don't know how often I'll get to come, but just keep me lifted in your prayers. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender.
from Brother Steve and Sister Elsie and Beth Ann in a long time, so I'll get them next. Before we sing, I'm going to tell on myself, but more I want to praise the Lord. Um, back in August, I brought another Jeep, and it had a bad motor in it. I rebuilt the motor, and had it on the crane, getting ready to drop it in, and as I got ready to drop it in, it wasn't an audible voice, it was just a voice that spoke to my heart and said, it's not right, you've got a problem. I dismissed it, and now so I walked away and came back and got ready to put it back in, and it's not right, you're going to have problems. So I pulled it back, started to tear it back down, and in my arrogance, I felt like I knew exactly what was the matter with it, fixed that problem. Put it in there, and as I was putting it in there, it's, you know, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you're going to have problems. So it went on for about a month. I had a lot of problems with it, beat my head against the wall. And in my despair, I laid hands on it and said, Lord, you know exactly what's the matter with this thing. Tell me what's the matter with it, Lord, and I'll praise you for it. He revealed exactly what was the matter with it. I changed the parts out, and it is perfect. God does things perfectly if i get rid of my arrogance and learn to lean on him and that small still voice no matter what we do if we lean on that voice it'll never fail us and i thank god for that voice it's led me to this place and in the truth and i praise god for that we're going to try a new one on you so bear with us 
The curtain black as midnight had been drawn across the sky. The world saw only suffering as they watched the Savior die. A lifetime of perfection seemed to end in tragedy. Or on that hill of darkness, there was no one who could see. This side of the cross, victory has been won. When he cried, it is finished. Grace had just begun. And now there's hope for every heart. To gain what death has lost, this side of the cross. His words rang out in heaven, and they shook the gates of hell. And though I didn't hear them, they changed my life as well. His dying love and mercy drew me near to Calvary. Where I knelt in repentance and looked up at last to see this side of the cross victory has been won when he cried it is finished grace had just begun now there's hope for every heart Through all that Christ has done To gain what death has lost This side of the cross This side of the cross Victory has been won When he cried it is finished Grace had just begun Now there's hope for every heart Through all that Christ has done to gain what death has lost this side of the cross. Amen. Thank you all for that. You know, as Brother David was testifying, it brought back memories of December the 1st, 1979, I heard that small, still voice telling me not to go hunting. And I heard it, it was either two or three times, don't go hunting. And then when I got to my cousin's house, I pulled up into his division there, and there was a little speed bump. And I put my brakes on, and my brakes went out. And again, don't go hunting. So if I hadn't went hunting, 
I feel like that the Lord would have spoke to me in a different way. But I was stubborn and went hunting, and so I got shot. But I have given the Lord the glory for it ever since, so may he be glorified. When we left, I had to check with Philip to see where he was at to take Erica to it. He was up in Floyd Knob, so he was <coughs> exit up there working. So I gave you directions to get the subdivision. I did that just fine. He got ready to leave. He told me, he said, Mom, you go the other way. Go down Old Vincent Road, Old Hill Road, and pay all the time. Anybody that knows that area. It is hilly, it's curvy, it's dark. And I thought, Lord, just with me, I didn't have to get killed. I got home just fine. The car in the garage, Thursday when I left to come to church, I started hearing the noise. And I knew it wasn't right. And I came home to church and got home. Thursday, Friday morning, Phil this, and he thought it was a belt. Sweet. Jonathan checked it. I thought it was one of those sensors going on. So I took a look at that noise, and as we pulled in there, it started cutting out just quick. But they had it right and checking it. It was the sensors, and they had it fixed. But I'm just thankful it didn't go out Tuesday night, and I was out there in those hills by myself. But the Lord was with me. I said, if I can drive those hills after dark, why should I be afraid to drive anywhere? Amen. Amen. May the Lord be glorified. All right, Brother Stephen, Sister Elsie, Beth Ann. can help us out number 54 in a good old red book I think you have to agree with the words oh I want to see him I tell you there's a song on the radio I hear every now and then when I have it on uh, I don't know what the title is I'm pretty poor on memory of these things but the story you know the song goes things I guess he the man thought he'd had to do had to visit his father and parents certain times and do these things and I guess his uh, father had a heart attack and barely made it through, but now he looked at it a little differently. He got the scene. Things of life take things from us, and we appreciate it more. I know a lot of sickness has been going along, and I don't consider us singers, but I'm just happy that I've got a voice to sing today. I've been fighting allergies for something like a two months here and things, but uh, it is good to feel good, and we just keep praying for the ones that are still battling whatever's going around and around and around, but I know there is a better day coming, and and that's what our hope and prayers are, that we are going to see him, and the sooner the better. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson glow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on. Oh, my. 
thank the Lord. Um, a couple of weeks ago when it was raining really bad, I, in our bathroom, I just happened to look at the ceiling and there was a huge water spot and I thought, oh man, the roof's leaking. <laughs> so I put my hands up there and I couldn't push through it. So I called Matt, like what roofer he uses. So the guy came out and um, looked at it and said, all your seals on all your pipes, that I don't even know what those are, but <laughs> they were all off. And, you know, the next week it rained really hard and he fixed them all. And God must have known I'm not a good painter because I thought I'm going to have to paint this ceiling. And when I woke up the next day, it was completely dry and didn't even have a watermark. So I thank God for that. <laughs> and I thank God that he showed the guy the other spots and I didn't have to put a new roof on. <laughs> Thank you all for that. And that's uh, quite astonishing that it didn't have a stain. I mean, that's that's really unusual. So, May the Lord be glorified. All right, you all can be seated. We have a little treat this morning. We have several little treats this morning. And if those little treats would come up front. The children are going to play the bells for us this morning.
Thank you, children, for that. That was very beautiful. Appreciate that. And I just looked back there after the service started, and I saw Ethan. Good to have you. May the Lord ever keep his hand upon you and guide you throughout your journey in the military. So. All right, let us all stand if we would, and I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen. Well, greetings to everybody this morning. I hope you're feeling well. It's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a time that the world would think it is terrible, but to the saints of God, it's a wonderful time. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your many benefits. For the little children, Lord, that plays their instruments. For the grown-ups, Lord, that play their instruments that bless us. For the ones that sing praise you for them, Lord, for each member of this assembly, for Brother Bud. May you, Lord, grant us the privilege in the hour we're living in to walk close to you and to have your presence upon us. Forgive us our failures. Be with us, Lord, as we would look unto you today concerning the things that are ready, ready to happen and the things that are going on. Lord, to us there's kind of a lull in time, but unto you everything is on time. There won't be a day slip by that you don't know about. And there won't be a day that you did not know about from the foundation of the world 
Here, Lord, we stand at the end of this age. Each age had a beginning. Each age had an ending. Lord, we're standing here after almost 50 years, Lord, since the seals were first preached. Lord, for another opportunity and a time, Lord, that we have to be able to come together to give you thanks, Lord, for your wonderful benefits and blessings. Bless your people as they have come out, those that are unable to be here, but they're listening and watching as well as we. Help them, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Sister Elner, it's so good to see you. Got a good report from the doctor, so may the Lord bless our sister. I made a statement Thursday night concerning something that I saw probably close to three years ago. I should have put a date on it, but I didn't. Something I saw in a dream. And I believe with all my heart this morning that the dream don't have long. Until its fulfillment. A year from now, we could be in that fulfillment. And I'll tell you why during this message this morning. You say, well, no man knows the day or there. That, that is the time of his coming. But that don't mean that there's not certain things to indicate to us that his coming is drawing nigh. I saw some things the other night on television concerning some prophet, prophecy preachers of two of them and they could not agree whether it's going to be rapture before the tribulation or rapture after the tribulation. Because they don't know how to separate Scripture, but yet they're prophecy preachers. I have no desire to follow something like that that does not know the times or the seasons because the Bible says that we will know the times and the seasons of when he's coming. But we will not know the day and the hour. But I tell you what, we're going to know very close to when it's going to be. Concerning things that have already been spoken, things that we will see happen very shortly. I do not stand here making predictions today, but I stand here with the uh, truth in my heart that, brother, sister, we, we don't have long to be here. If what I heard is right, then, brother, sister, Israel 
could be at war this time next year. And I'm going to I'm going to look into that. I have scriptures here that these scriptures are scriptures all except that last one that I have here that Brother Jackson went over. Whenever he was talking of Israel, each one of them except the 23rd Psalm, and I put that for a reason. I preached on uh, I preached on Ezekiel 43 through 48 and I, I was given numbers and there's weights in there of of how that Israel measured her money and measured the the wheat, the oil and stuff like that and I'm already getting criticism from that. More or less made fun of. That's all right. You go right ahead because I'm not talking to you today. I'm talking to the saints of God and people are going to do what they're going to do and the more ammunition that you give them, the more they're going to fight. So you go right ahead, because really I'm not, I'm not worried about your criticism. The things that I have preached, I've stood behind them, and the things that I've preached, I've had others to stand with me. And I appreciate that today, because it had to be that way. You people that are standing together, it had to be that way. Because God has given us something for this hour that whatever is thrown against it, it will stand. Brother Bud and myself are not just standing here beating the air. Or just having something to say to keep people together. Because if we had done that, we would have done it different. We would have compromised where everybody would have been here. But I guess it's just not in me. We're in Brother Bud to compromise what God shows us. I don't mean that it's, it don't make it hard. Because whenever you follow God, your flesh is going to suffer. And Paul said, I die daily. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And if we can recognize that in ourselves, then uh, God's going to make himself known unto the saints of God. These scriptures are all uh, scriptures that are none of the last week's message because this is really uh, a two sermon message and that's that's it that's all that I'm going to use it for and because of that I didn't just call you all to tell you all something just to get you here because I feel that I have a basis to say what I did Thursday night 
and to let you know that we are closer than what we thought. If what I'm seeing be true and what I'm hearing be true, then brother or sister, Israel is going to be at war soon. The Bible says this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. And like the World War II veterans that are dying off, there are not many of them left. I know back a year or two ago they were saying that a thousand a day was dying. So that would get rid of that group of people very quickly. And the thing that is going on now, they said the Holocaust victims were dying off fast. This just come out this week. That they were uh, that the ones that went through the Holocaust. And I remember Brother Jackson going over that in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation, the fifth seal, where it said, said for them to rest a little season until their fellow brethren, which will be the two prophets and then uh, the ones that will die in the last part of the week be fulfilled. And he said that won't he said that won't last over a generation. I mean it'll be within that generation of people. People have tried to measure generations forty years, seventy years, whatever. A generation to me is is the ones that are living at one point, and they're still living when the next thing comes in. And the ones that were living back then, they are getting old now. The ones that recognize it and all are getting to be in their 80s. And for it all to be fulfilled, you have a seven-year period of time that will finish this up. So they're going to be well in their 80s or early 90s. If this thing is right that I'm seeing, I have a I have a map. First one was when uh Jesus was here. Here is Galilee of which covers this upper part here. And then you have Samaria. There are three different places when Jesus was here. And then you have Judea, which covers Jerusalem down. And this is the way that it was marked off because really Judea is um, is measured by Judah Maccabees, which extends farther than what it did. That's that's the reason that it's named Judea. But we know that Jerusalem down is is where 
the Judean people were given. Back whenever Judah and Simon, of course you had uh, Levites that were in mixed in with this, but Judah and Simon, but it was all called Judah. Judea after Judah. But I was telling you that, uh, that's the way that it was marked off in Jesus' day, which extended farther than what, uh, than Jerusalem upward, because Jew, Judas Maccabee, he took much of this area. And for a, better than a hundred years, it was in the hands of the Judean Jews, and they were the ones that helped to defeat uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. A hundred and some years before Christ. But then, after... A long time, the Romans come in and they had a lot of good things to offer the Jews and the descendants of Judas Maccabees more or less turned it over to them and then they become the rulers of the whole area because they negotiated with them of which that uh, they thought it would be easier on them, which we know that the Romans were not friendly people to the Jews after a while. In the time of Jesus, they tolerated the Jews because Jesus was able to preach and to bring out his message. So this is why this is divided in these places Galilee is named after the Sea of Galilee. And Samaria is named after the Samaritan people. And then, of course, we know what Judah, about Ju- uh, Judah. I have, today I've got different maps yeah, but I want to go into the scripture today. I've got several scriptures there, and I want to go to the tenth chapter of the book of Zechariah. You say, "Well, we've done gone over that." I know that, but it don't hurt anything to have things reminded to us again. I'll just start at the first verse and go through that. Ask you of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grace in the field. This is uh, both a spiritual application and a natural application. It says, For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock, They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, which were over Israel, the spiritual leaders. And I punished the goats, for the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah. And hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. That's the battle that is to come. And that is what I, what I want to talk about this morning in your hearing. Out of him 
came forth the corner, other words, the cornerstone. Because God had to start somewhere. And that's what this is talking about. God's starting point, and it's got to be with Judah. I know I've said that several times, but it's the truth. Made him his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail. The nail is what puts something together. The nail is what holds. In the, in the midst of a storm or whatever, it's got to be nailed, nailed down. Out of him the battle bow. Out of him, see it says, out of him, out of him. Out of him, every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies. In the mar of the street, streets, in the battle. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. He's talking of the enemy here. Because I remember several weeks ago when I was talking that I said God will shut off the electricity he did before to their vehicles. Because you had all that Russian armament, the trucks, new trucks, new tanks and everything. And when they got into the desert there in the Sinai, their vehicles wouldn't work. It had been something if one hadn't worked. But God shut the whole thing down. He said, and I will strengthen the house of Judah. Remember, that is the first. And I will save the house of Joseph. That is your northern tribes from Jerusalem upward, which does not include Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city of, the Jude, of Judea. This is what David conquered, and therefore it become a part of the, of the kingdom of which David was over. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them. For I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. In other words, he's going to bring them back to where that they're going to be as though that he never did send them into other countries. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim, that's Joseph's tribe, because he was the representative, shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. Said their children shall see it and be glad. That's not talking about little boys and little girls. That's talking about the ones that's going to raise up into the battle. Because you take your older Jews that are in Israel today, they really don't care. They want peace at no cost to them. I hate to say that, but that's the way that it is. 
He said, I will hiss for them. In other words, he's going to come to me. I want, to, I want to tell you something. He said he had hiss for them. And gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt, down, down here below here, out of the land of Egypt. And then he said, out of Assyria, which is all the way up here. Syria is just a name come from Assyria, which uh, does not cover all of Assyria. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. Up here is Lebanon, and over here is, in this area, is Gilead there. Gilead and Lebanon, but there won't be, there's still not enough room for them. There's so many of them. This is where Menanzas and two other tribes settled after they had, whenever they were getting ready to cross the river Jordan. This is where they settled. And it become a problem to Israel, and they were going to fight against them. But then when they found out that they had made an altar, when they found out this altar was not an altar of disagreement, but it was an altar of peace, then it was all accepted. And they told them, as long as there's a place to fight for Israel, we will stand with you. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in my, na in my name, down in his name, saith the Lord. You say, well, I've heard that before. I want to go to the 12th chapter now. And then I will tell you why that I feel and see the things that I do. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the, formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about. That is as we go to our uh, to to Israel today map Israel today right here is what Israel occupies the white part this is what the, the Palestinians want and over here is is where Jordan is of which 
at one time it was Ammon, Moab, and Esau's land. But we find that David took this. Whenever they come against him, he took it because God was with him, and he, God remembers. It tells you in these scriptures that I have here that God remembers what Esau done to the children of Israel, what Moab and Ammon done. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of of trembling unto all people round about. That's talking of that's talking of the Arabs, the Arab world, all about, round about. Egypt, Saudi Arabia over here, Jordan here, Syria here, and Lebanon here. You see what that they they're not much of a place there for the Jews to live. And the Gaza Strip right here is where that the Hamas is. God says that He will take them from all of that. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. Now this is the world, and this is where we're at in Scripture. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it, against what? Judah and Jerusalem. In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah. I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. In other words, he's going to, going to cut their, their electric off. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, like a torch of fire in the sheep. And they shall devour all the people round about. Here. Devour them. Other words, they're going to take rule over them. Round, round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. And I remember writing that down when Brother Jackson... I've still got it in my Bible there. And he said, by Jews. It'll be inhabited again, not by all people of the world, but by Jews. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. 
In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble um, among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, and the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Why have I made the statement that I did? I turned the television on the other night for some reason to Trinity Broadcast, which I hardly ever watch anything on there because they're not anything worth watching. And Paul Krauts was talking to two prophecy preachers of which they did not agree one with another, yet they're both prophecy preachers. But when it come down close to the end of their conversation, they made a statement. And the statement was that Israel, Netanyahu, or let me say Netanyahu, has agreed. The 10th of December of next year, that he will turn Judea, half of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount, of which that they're going to make it an international place, unto the Arabs for our Arab state. December the 10th next year. He's done, he done signed it. It's already signed. And they said that this was decided, all three of them agreed, that this was decided the 23rd of September of this year. Remember my dream. That was the only thing that I could remember the 23rd. And this, I didn't call them and ask them when, when did this happen. They sat there and I almost let it slip by me because I was almost asleep. But when they said this was all signed the 23rd of September, then I woke up. If you remember my dream, it's been close to three years now. I dreamed that I was sitting on a couch. The couch was kind of out in the middle of the floor to where that anybody could walk around behind it. And I was sitting there on the couch and somebody was talking behind me to someone else. And I was sa sitting there listening on the couch as on, on the end of the couch. And then they began to mention dates. At the time, I knew every date. But that whenever I woke up, 
I forgot all the dates but the 23rd. And I said it seemed like it would be somewhere in the fall of the year. You know that I've said that. The fall of the year. And as they were discussing these dates, then all at once there was a voice said, Gabriel. And I immediately woke up just like that out of my dream. Now, if this be a, if this be right, I'll let you let you look at it. If this be right, brother or sister, a year or a little after a year from now, Israel will be getting ready for their battle. But it remember it's Judah. Judah. It don't look possible. There are half a million Jews from here down that have occupied oh well I don't want to say occupy, that's what the Arabs say. These these are not occupiers. But there are a little over a half a million Jews down here that the North do not care about. Northern Israel don't really care about the southern part because they are troublemakers. Because they will not give in to the demands of, of anyone. They have built, they have been pushed out, they give away Gaza, which is right here, they give away Gaza, Sharon did, and within days, he was, he had this stroke, that he's still alive, but he don't know anything, just laying there a vegetable. Well, you say, well, the Bible does not say that you'll know the day or the hour. I'm not talking about the coming of the Lord. I'm talking about Israel getting their land back because we we know that there's a time elapse. But as they were talking, which I which I knew, they uh, Judah is going to have to do it on her own. Because they will not give up Jerusalem. You can't and have prophecy still going on. Am I saying that uh, it will be the 10th of December? No, I didn't say that. I, what I'm saying is that whenever they begin to try to force them out, it is not going to work. Because this is God's people down here. Let me read that again. Starting in the sixth verse, In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth afar among the wood. Now they don't have the equipment that the north has. All your peace now movement is up in here. Just like it is here in America, there are people, they, they really do not care for the Christian people. You are not cared for by this nation. And these people, the population is growing like 6% to the other is a stalemate. Because they're having children. I remember when... I, I remember when Netanyahu was elected. 
there was a man named Moshe Fagan, which Moshe is Moses. Moshe Fagan. He was number 19 on the list as one of Israel's, um, it's not Senate, but whatever you call it. He was number 19, Netanyahu moved him to 36 so he wouldn't have no say in the government because he did not want to give land away. Back in the 70s, Netanyahu would not give land away. But Netanyahu is a politician. That's all he is, is a politician. People won't like me saying that, but whenever you, whenever you sign a treaty with the, with the world community, the December the tenth of next year will be when you will give away southern Israel, and these people are going to be on their own, except for God. But as I read that, the seventh verse, And the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not, do not magnify themselves against Judah. God is going to cause this all to happen and Judah is going to be in uh, the lead of this so that Jerusalem, when it's all over, won't be able to take the initiative and say, we've done it ourselves, or the house of David, which would be David's descendants. And they claim that, I know they said by the end of last year that they would, uh, that they had already figured out 5,000 people that were uh, uh, that that were descendants of David they said they would be living in Jerusalem 5000 of them but i see over here in the 10th chapter that that northern israel is awakened after something goes on down here But after that dream that I had, I, I woke up. And then I went back to sleep. And when I went back to sleep, I, I had another dream. And I dreamed that I was walking through the field. Through a field and I started out, then... There was a few that started out, but then the longer that I went through that field, I was not trying to get a following. God knows that. I have preached and let people accept what they would or what they wouldn't. I've not pushed for a following. But as I, I go through this field, I see people begin to come together. And when I get to the end of the field, I see a group of people that have gathered together, and, and you can't tell where they start and where they stop. I believe that, Brother Bud, whenever this time comes, then... Everybody is going to be seeing eye to eye. And God is going to bless His children. Now, whenever I, whenever I say this, you say, well, 
I've got a I've got another map. A millennial map. You see what I've got here? Then this is a millennial map. Of which Judah and uh, and these is going to be over here too. But Judah will cover this. This is in the millennium. But we're not in the millennium now. This is still Judah's portion down here until the millennium starts. And then, then Judah is the seventh here from Dan. And it will be on both sides of Jerusalem whenever that time comes. This holy portion is not that big as they have it, but it is an illustration. Down here is Benjamin, Simon, uh, Issachar, Zebulon, and Gad. Down here. Now these were up here in this area before. But now they're down here of where that Judah is today. Seventh verse again. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among, among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Now, in the 14th chapter, there one verse that stands out here among the others. The 14th verse. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold, silver, apparel, in abundance. But then he goes into something else. I've got I've got Micah up there, the seventh chapter. I put this up here to show you that we are not talking about the millennial reign whenever I, I bring this out this morning. It is Judah down here. Goes all the way down to uh the Egyptian border. I want to go to Micah now. Seventh chapter, the seventh verse. which I will go back to my map of Israel today. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. 
Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. This is in the last days for Israel. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. And shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mar of the street, of the streets. In the days that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. The decree is come from Exodus uh, or Numbers. No, it's Exodus. I have, have it have it here somewhere. Deuteronomy, yeah, 28th chapter. Deuteronomy, 28th chapter. And this is where the degree was given out that God told them, said, if you follow me, then I will bless you. But the day you turn against me, I will smite you. And whenever Israel turned against God, then they were scattered to the four winds of the earth. Hardly any Jews lived in Israel at all throughout the centuries of time. Because they were hunted and slain because they were Jews. There's no reason other than what that they, who they were, that they were killed, that they were destroyed, because even the Catholic Church blamed the crucifixion on, on the Jews, and they said that, uh, every tragedy had come. They said that the Jews were to blame. They'd been hunted like dogs. Or dogs are not hunted anymore. I may say coyotes. <laughs> They've been hunted like coyotes for all of those years. And you still have them that are in Egypt. You still have them in other places today because there's no way they can get out. But in the days that thy walls are to be built in that day shall the decree be far removed. Other words, God has forgiven them. In that day also he shall even be, in that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria. Appear beyond our map. Come to thee from Assyria. And from the fortified cities and from the fortress even to the river. And from sea to sea. And from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. For the lives that they lived, for the worship of other gods, and things that they did do that were against the commandments of God. 
They did not live by the commandments of which that God delivered unto Moses. So God, He punished them. But now then He's bringing them back. The 14th verse. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. Over here. Bashan and Gilead. That's across the river. That's where Jordan is today. God is saying, let them feed there. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. They're going to be so surprised, the world, that's talking about the world. When all of this comes about that you've seen people whenever they get so excited or whatever that they put their hand over their mouth in, un- in, in surprise. It said that their ears will be deaf. What is he talking about there? They're so in tune to what's happening that they will not hear anything else going on. Did you ever have your thoughts on somebody and somebody say something to you? And they say, did you hear me? What? It's not that you're ignoring them, but you got a uh, you got a, got a thought train towards something that is not uh, relating to what they're saying. And these people, this Jewish people, is God does something for them of what that He's going to do for Judah. Think about. 500,000 standing against the world, 500,000 Jews, and and nobody can do nothing against it. They don't have all the planes that Israel got because it says that they shall be as David and the angel of the Lord before them, and Dave and the house of David shall be as God. That is when Michael comes on the scene for Israel. I believe that Michael has been there at different times, even in wars that they have had before this will come about. It says the angel of the Lord. And then they get really low. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. God's, God's going to put the fear, fear of God in them. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. That's what they are. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Because of thee. They shall fear because of thee. Brother, sister, we got some hours ahead of us. That's why I said at the beginning, when I first got up here this morning, that's why I said this is the best day that you have ever lived. But could it be 
that God has given us a little insight into it. I know I've got the 23rd Psalm there. But this was not what I saw. It was dates. But they were taken away from me at the time. But here, I hear something later. And Netanyahu said he's going to forsake this. God don't need you anyway, Netanyahu. If you got that feeling against the Jews, God don't need your help. He don't need your armies. I mentioned Moshe Fagan a while ago. Well, that man didn't want to give away anything. God's going to use somebody there to save Israel. He's done got the man in mind, and he's got he's got everything because God don't don't fight with many. What did Gideon do? He had 300 men and didn't have any weapons. He had some old jars that he put over some lights. And as the old saying used to be when I was a boy, he scared the liver out of them. The message is today, delight yourself in the Lord. I want to go into that a little bit more tonight in in our position. Of what we must do. We're not living on maybes today. Or might be, or could be. It's a possibility. The scripture is not a possibility. And I'm saying today, if Netanyahu follows through on what he has signed, it's gotta be close. I don't say that because of that statement, but I'm saying this of my own statement. We gotta be close. There, there are people here that believe. We, we can cause our own problems. Or we can line up behind a word. Because he said he would lead us. There are people, maybe I shouldn't say this, there are people that are having a lot of problems because you didn't divorce yourself.
from the thought maybe somebody else, maybe somebody could be right. This belief is not two beliefs. There's got to be somebody that's going to stand for something. If God's raising up a ministry for people to follow, then that's your perfection. Well, I know people with good ideas. I do too. Henry Ford had a good idea. <laughs> Helped a lot of people. But whenever it comes, whenever it comes to the scripture, you, you just can't compromise. What? What concord has truth with error? Are you too hard? Brother Bud and me are priests priest against every week. Every week. That's all right. I'll use a statement Brother Jackson used. They didn't butter my bread and they don't tie my shoes. <laughs> and if, if you don't agree this morning, that spirit is rising up against you to condemn. The only condition that I put on what I said this morning is the condition if they follow through with this. But it can't be for off. We can't go five more years like this. This coming year will be 2012. The next year will be 2013, and it will be 50 years since the seals were preached. March and April of 63. It can't keep going. There got to be an end to all of this. A stopping point that God has already marked, and I believe that He has given us an indication. I cannot say when the coming of the Lord is. I will not say that, but if, if what that they have agreed on happens, I can say Judea is going to rise. And if this thing, if this thing happens, that I'm looking at, if this happens, one more year will put us in the beginning of that. And whenever God gets ready for Judah to take her part, it won't last a year or ten years like the rocky thing has lasted. Ten days be a long time.
But I will ask you one question. Why was it the 23rd of September? You just entered into fall. Why was it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your grace and love. For your tender care and kindness and help. And I pray for your people today that each saint would begin, Lord, to look at each, each one would look at their situation. Lord, we can't dial 911 on this because they would laugh at us. But one of these days, Lord, the life will be the last. And your people will be all gathered together. The terrors will be gone. Help us, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. I can say praise the Lord after that. Amen. You know, we can just look at the conditions in the Middle East and tell that it's getting close. But then after what he has brought out here today, brothers and sisters, we better get ready. We better get ready. And as Brother David comes, if you'll let us all stand. If you have a need and you'd like to come for prayer, then feel free to come right on. But something Brother Allen said there about divorcing yourselves. I'm going to quote a scripture. I'm just going to leave it at that. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness and you can read the rest of it sometimes when I'm weary Satan wars with my soul To get my mind off of the cross Oh, then I start fighting battles Christ has already won in a war, Satan's already lost. Oh, if I hold fast to the foot of the cross, I'll be caught in its life. Plenty flood Oh, if I stay on my knees When Satan wants me Oh, then he'd have to walk through the blood 
can you picture Calvary and one spotless lamb that suffered and died for our sin? Oh, his blood it ran so deep that it covered my soul. Oh, and Satan cannot enter it. Oh, if I hold fast, hold to the foot of the cross, oh, I'll be caught in this life. Cleansing blood. Oh, oh, if I stay on my knees, oh, and Satan wants me, oh, then he died. Oh, to walk through the Because in his life, praise if love. Oh, if I stay on my knees, oh, if Satan was me, oh, that he'd have to walk through the blood Oh, sometimes when I'm weary Satan wars with my soul Oh, to get my mind off of the cross Oh, then I start Start fighting battles that Christ has already won. In a war, Satan's already lost. Oh, if I hold fast, oh, to the foot of the cross. Oh, I'll be caught in its life, cleansing blood. Oh, if I stay, stay on my knees when Satan wants me. Oh, then he'd have to walk through the blood Oh, if I hold fast Hold to the foot of Hold of the cross Oh, I'll be caught It is life Oh, cleanse if love Oh, if I say Stay on my knees, oh, and Satan wants me, oh, that he'd have to walk through the blood, oh, if I hold fast, oh, to the foot of, of the cross, Oh, I'll be caught in His life, cleansing flood. Oh, if I stay on my knees, when Satan wants me, oh, then he'd have to walk through the blood. Stay, stay on my knees.
day on my knees when Satan wants me. Oh, then he'd have to walk through the blood. Oh, can you picture Calvary and one spotless lamb? Oh, who suffered and died for my sin. Oh, His blood, it ran so deep that it covered my soul. Oh, and Satan cannot enter in. Oh, if I hold fast, hold to the foot of the cross, so oh, I'll be caught in His life. Cleansing flood. If I stay on my knees when Satan wants me, oh, then he'd have to walk through the blood. Oh, if I stay.
I'm ready for the service tonight. Because it's been a wonderful morning. The presence of the Lord has been here. In word, in song, and among his children. So I look forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. And just remember your brothers and sisters in prayer. That the Lord would keep his hand upon each one. There are many needs among the body of Christ. A lot of sickness is going around. So let us pray for those that are sick and suffering in body. And remember the service tonight and come back with expectation. Brother Mark Cox, could I get you to dismiss us in prayer?